millennia past, people have progressively figured out more effective ways of getting from one place to another. Previously, long distances could only be traversed by horseback or even on foot. But today we have at our disposal a variety of modes of transportation, including cars, planes, trains, and even futuristic ships. So while we've already made progress in developing faster, more efficient forms of transportation on Earth, the question now is how manned spaceflight will evolve in this regard. We have ignition and we have liftoff. As is well known, a space probe launched from Earth takes many months, if not years, to reach its galactic target. It's hard to say what the future holds for this venture. A fascinating question arises when we follow the thought experiment of breaking ever new cosmic speed records to its logical conclusion. Will there ever be light speed ships? In today's video, we will quickly take a closer look at this fascinating issue with you. But before we begin, kindly subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enable the notification feature if you haven't already. Light travels quickly because it has a short path to travel. According to cosmological laws, nothing can move faster than light. In reality, it is the fastest object on the planet. There is no limit to the distance that light may travel. It travels at a speed of 186,000 miles per second. In the blink of an eye, light may travel from Los Angeles to New York City, faster than any commercial airliner by more than 10,000 orders of magnitude. Proxima Centauri is the nearest star to Earth. It's 4.25 light years away, or 25 trillion miles away, 40 trillion kilometers. The Parker Solar Probe, which is already in orbit, will achieve a top speed of 450,000 miles per hour, making it the fastest spacecraft ever. At such speed, it would take just 20 seconds to travel from Los Angeles to New York City, yet the Solar Probe would take 6,633 years to reach Earth's nearest neighboring solar system. Everything in our universe is bound by a few simple rules. The conservation of energy, momentum, and angular momentum is guaranteed any time two quanta come into contact with each other. There are no differences between the physics of a forward-moving system of particles and its mirrored antiparticle counterpart when time is reversed in a mirror. Nothing can ever travel faster than the speed of light, and nothing with mass will ever be able to achieve this coveted feat. Many people have come up with innovative ways to get around this final restriction. In theory, tachyons have been introduced as hypothetical particles that could theoretically exceed the speed of light, but tachyons must have imaginary masses and do not exist in the real world. Although a sufficiently twisted space in general relativity could produce other, shorter paths for light, there are no known wormholes in our physical universe. While quantum entanglement can produce suspicious behavior at a distance, no information can be transported faster than light. People will have to go faster than the speed of light if they ever hope to travel effortlessly between stars. However, until now, faster than light travel has only existed in science fiction. In Isaac Asimov's Foundation series, humans can use jump drives to travel between planets, stars, and even the entire cosmos. Interstellar astronauts and Thor heroes exploit wormholes to travel across solar systems in just a few seconds. Warp drive technology is another option that Star Trek fans are familiar with. Theoretically, warp drives are conceivable, but a long way off. One of the many obstacles separating warp drive theory from reality was reported to have been surmounted in two recent studies published in March 2021. However, how do these speculative warp drives actually operate in reality? As for the future of humankind, will they be able to travel at warp speed? Albert Einstein's general relativity theory is the foundation of modern physics' knowledge of space-time. According to general relativity, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light in the universe. Mass and energy can also cause space-time to distort around massive objects, such as stars and black holes. Many space heroes are afraid of falling into or getting stuck in a gravity well because of this curvature. John Campbell and Isaac Asimov, among the first science fiction writers, regarded warping as a technique to get around the speed limit. Wouldn't it be cool if a spaceship could shrink the volume of space around it while simultaneously growing the volume behind it? The warp drive from Star Trek is based on this concept. Mexican theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre demonstrated in 1994 that compressing space-time in front of the spacecraft while expanding it behind was mathematically achievable under the laws of general relativity. How do we interpret this? Figure out how many meters separate two places. 
33 feet. The distance between points A and B is 10 seconds if you travel one meter each second. However, if the distance between you and point B could be reduced to only one meter, that would be ideal. At your greatest speed of one meter per second, you would arrive at point B in less than a second if you were traveling through space-time. Using this method does not violate the laws of relativity because you are not traveling faster than the speed of light. Alcubierre proved hypothetically that the warp drive from Star Trek was possible. Surely the Proxima Centauri system is not far away and we can go now, right? One flaw with Alcubierre's method of compressing space-time was that it needed negative energy or mass. The space-time around the vessel would be flattened and curled to shorten distances using Alcubierre's warp drive. Either a ring of negative energy density or negative mass would be necessary for the warp drive to work. That leaves only negative energy as a viable alternative for physicists. Particles and antiparticles would have to be imbalanced in a warp drive's creation of negative energy. An electron and an anti-electron, for example, might be caught by the mass of the warp drive if they arrive near it, causing an imbalance. Energy density decreases as a result of this imbalance. This negative energy would be used by Alcubierre's warp drive to produce the space-time bubble. However, for a warp drive to generate sufficient negative energy, a great deal of matter is required. According to Alcubierre's calculations, the mass of the entire observable universe would be required to power a warp drive with a 100-meter bubble. A physicist named Chris Vandenbroek discovered in 1999 that enlarging the bubble's volume while maintaining its surface area the same would dramatically reduce the amount of energy required to the mass of the Sun, a big step forward but still a long way from reality. What's the plan for the future? Warp drives may be closer to reality thanks to two recent articles, one by Alexei Bobrik and Gianni Matire, and the other by Eric Lentz. When Bobrik and Matire realized that they could remove the requirement to use negative energy by changing space-time in a certain way, they were delighted. However, a warp drive that can travel faster than light cannot be created using this method. Lentz, on the other hand, came up with a different technique that doesn't involve negative energy at all. In order to solve the general relativity equations, he employed a different geometric technique and discovered that a warp drive does not require negative energy. The bubble would be able to travel faster than the speed of light thanks to Lentz's approach. Science fiction stories like Orson Scott Carr's Ender's Game, where one character ages in space for eight years despite the passage of 50 years on Earth, feature time dilation. Einstein's theory of special relativity states that travel across space alters the flow of time, and time dilation is a result. When traveling through the three dimensions of physical space, the quicker you move through it, at least relative to another object, the slower you move through the fourth dimension, time. In contrast to the twin paradox, time dilation is not a theoretical concept or a thought experiment. The Hefeler-Keating experiment of 1971 demonstrated this when two atomic clocks were flown in opposing directions on planes. The time difference between the two clocks was caused by the movement of the clocks relative to each other. In other physics tests, this is also found to be true. Let's not forget that these fascinating breakthroughs are based on mathematical simulations. Until we have experimental verification, we can't trust these models completely. There are still a few mysteries surrounding the science of hyperspace travel and the various propulsion technologies. All of this forward thinking excites me as a huge admirer of science fiction. And the universe is out there waiting and ready to be discovered by us. 